In this tutorial, I'll show you how to set up multiple scenes in a single Blender file. In a previous tutorial, I showed you how to make the ball falling scene. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to add a title scene and a credits scene. I'm going to start by opening the animation of the sphere falling, which I made in a previous tutorial. If you want to use this animation, you can download it from my website. I'm going to rename the scene Ball Falling, and I'm going to click the plus button to add a new scene. The new option creates a completely blank new scene, and the full copy creates a full duplicate copy of the current scene. For more information on the other options, go to the Blender Wiki manual. I'm going to choose the Copy Settings option, which creates a blank new scene, but copies over the render settings. I'm going to rename the scene Titles. This is where I'll put the titles of my short movie. And if we look in the Outliner window, in the ball falling scene, we have a camera, a lamp, a plane, and a sphere. And in the title scene, at the moment, we have nothing. First thing I'm going to add to the empty scene is a camera. I'm going to move the camera up. I'm going to set its Z location to be four Blender units. I'm going to the object data properties of the camera. Now because the titles and the credits are 2D animation, I'm going to change the camera type to orthographic. I'm going to add a lamp, a point lamp and I'm going to set its location to be the same as the camera for Blender units in the Z location. I'm going to add some text and I'm going to look through the camera at the text. So I choose camera and now for some reason it goes to user perspective but if I choose camera again we do look through the camera. Go to the object data properties for the text. Scroll down and set the alignment to center. I'm going to vertically center the text by dragging on the green arrow. Scroll up. Now Blender comes with one true type font, B font, and no variants. So if you click bold, nothing will happen. Now you can access two type fonts by clicking the folder icon. I'm running an old Windows XP system. If I click the folder icon, go to drive C where Windows is installed, go into the Windows folder. You should find a folder called fonts. Go into that folder and there are all the true type fonts. Now Arial Black is a good bold font for use with titles, but the one I'm going to choose is called Impact. I'm now ready to add a third scene, a credits scene. So I'm clicking the Add Scene button. Now I'm going to edit the text to make the credits, so only full copy will do. I'm going to change the title of the scene to Credits. And if we look in the Outliner window, the Credits scene has the same camera, lamp and text as the title scene. If we click the Browse Scene button, the scenes are displayed in alphabetical order. If you want to display them in chronological order, the best way of doing that is to number them. So I'm going to number the credit scene as scene 3, the ball falling scene as scene 2, and the title scene as scene 1. I want two text objects, so I'm holding down shift, pressing D and enter to duplicate. I'm going to name the duplicate text title and I'm going to hide it. I'm going to select the original text and name that text by and I'm going to go into edit mode to alter the text by Ian Scott back into object mode Hide that and unhide the text title. Select it into edit mode. The ball falls. 
back into object mode. I want to fade the title out and fade the byline in. To be able to see the fade in the real-time renderer we have to do some work. In the object menu we have to convert the text to mesh. In the object properties we have to tick transparency. If you click the plus to open up the properties panel, scroll down, open up display, scroll down and change shading from multi texture to GLSL and close that up. To fade the title I'm going to keyframe material properties. Click the material button, click add new material. The material must be specific to the title. I'm going to make the white the brightest it will go. Scroll down and tick transparency and make sure it's set to Z transparency. To set up keyframes, go to frame, make change, insert keyframe. I want the title to fade after two seconds, so I'm going to frame 50. Make change, I want the alpha to be one and the specular to be one, so I don't need to change anything. Insert keyframe, right click and insert keyframes. Go to frame 60. Make change, I want the alpha to be zero and the specular to be zero. Insert keyframe, right click, insert keyframe, rewind and play. And it fades. The fade was a bit quick, so I'm going to drag on these white diagonal lines to open up a new window. I'm going to change the new window to be a dope sheet window. I'm going to pan, shift and drag with the middle mouse button and zoom in with the mouse wheel. I'm going to select the second keyframe, press G to grab and move that down to frame 70. And while I'm here in the key menu, I'm going to change the interpolation mode to linear. Now if we play, the fade should last longer. Now for the byline, hide the title, show the byline, select the byline, scroll up, click the add new material button. I'll call the material, material by. Scroll down and make the white the whitest white. Scroll down, tick transparency. And I'm going to set the length of this scene to be 200 frames. In the object menu, we have to convert the text to mesh. And in the object properties, we have to tick transparency. Now we're ready to set up keyframes. In frame 1, I want the alpha to be 0 and the specular to be 0. Right click, insert keyframe. Go to frame 80. I want the alpha to be 0 and the specular to be 0. Go to frame 100. To fade it in, I want the alpha to be 1 and the specular to be 1. Right click, insert keyframe. Go to frame 150, right click, insert keyframe, right click, insert keyframe, go to frame 170 and change the alpha back to zero, right click, insert keyframe, and don't forget in the key menu the interpolation mode set to linear, rewind and play. And at frame 80, it should fade in and then fade out. We can now unhide the title. Next, I'm going to set up the credit scene. This scene will be much easier and quicker to set up. First, I'm going to add a new material for the text, which I'll make as white as possible. Next, I'm going to go into edit mode to edit the text. Director Ian Scott. I'm pressing enter twice between credits. I'm going to change the view to the top view and I'm going to pan shift and middle mouse button. Animator 
Ian Scott. The sound engine. Ian Scott and so on. Back into object mode. Change the view back to the camera view. Go to the object properties of the text. I'm dragging it on the tip of the green arrow to move the text down and I'm going to set the length of the scene to be 200 frames. I'm now ready to insert my keyframes. In frame 1 I'm going to go to the Y location of the text, right click and insert single keyframe. I'm going to go to the last frame, frame 200. I'm going to drag on the Y location to move the text up, up and just off the screen, right click, insert single keyframe. In the key menu, change the interpolation mode to linear, rewind and play, and the text should scroll up and eventually off the screen. I'll call that the end of part one of this tutorial. In part two of the tutorial, I'll show you how to add music to the titles and the credits.